told me, hey, I got something fantastic to tell you. He said, I am affiliated with people that speak with the spirits of the dead. How would you like to talk to this, the, the spirit of your dead mother? And I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. He said, you wouldn't be uh, afraid of talking to, to the spirit of your dead mother, would you? Well, I said, I'll tell you what, I would have to give that some thought because it's something I never thought about before in my life. Heart Research Center presents A Trip into the Supernatural with best-selling author Roger Morneau. While still a young man in the city of Montreal, Roger Morneau became involved in the worship of demons. In this two-part series, Roger gives us a first-hand account of his harrowing brush with the powers of darkness and ultimately his divine rescue. Also joining him are Cyril and Cynthia Grossi, the very couple who first pointed Roger from the darkness to the light. Conducting this exclusive interview are Dan and Karen Houghton of Heart Research Center. Let's now join the Houghtons and Roger Morneau as we together enter part one of A Trip into the Supernatural. How in the world did you ever get involved in praying to demon spirits? Well, when I came out of the uh, Navy after World War II, I um, was looking for to take up a trade in Montreal, Canada. And at that time, I ran across uh, a fellow that, that had been on a particular ship with me. And he said, hey, Mono, you're alive. How nice to meet you. He says, let's have a dinner tonight. I said to my boss, can I have the evening off? Because I was uh, the assistant to the Windsor Bowling Alleys and uh, uh, Billiard, you know. It's the high class uh, place in Montreal where all the dress manufacturer, manufacturing people go and uh, relax. <clears throat> so I got the evening off and I went out, uh, we went out and have dinner. He told me, hey, I got something fantastic to tell you. He said, I am affiliated with people that speak with the spirits of the dead. How would you like to talk to this, the, the spirit of your dead mother? And I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. He said, you wouldn't be uh, afraid of talking to, to the spirit of your dead mother, would you? Well, I said, I'll tell you what, I would have to give that some thought because it's something I never thought about before in my life. Most of us probably haven't, a little afraid of something like that. Well, he says, you know, you know, it's written all over your face. You're afraid of, of going to a seance. But he says, I know you, he says, you're going to come. And uh, then he started to tell me how brave I was when I was aboard ship, you know, <laughs> different things. He says, you're not the same man, you're change. You're, you're chicken. That's all I needed to hear. I said, when do we go to a seance. So one Saturday evening, we were in the place. It was the very first time. Very beautiful place, the medium. It was a lady. She had a gorgeous new home in Montreal. And there were about 20 uh, invited guests there, which I was one of them. And uh, she communicated with the spirits for uh, different people there and gave, telling them what the spirits said. And then there was one lady that had been talking almost continually before the, the seance started, and she didn't believe in the, the, you know, the dead appearing and all of this and all that. And she said, well, I would have to see my dead sister, she says, to believe it. So <laughs> while this, uh, the seance was, was going, one man uh, <clears throat> said, I would like to talk to my friend that died six months ago, but I don't want him to appear. Just want to talk to him because he says I don't trust you talking to my my friend for me. So the so the uh, medium says let me inquire of the spirit. Yeah, the spirit will will talk with you. And that big masculine voice was heard in the place. It says hi Frank. It's nice of you to ask for me to talk with you. And they had a little chat. And after it was over, Frank says. This is the greatest thing honored. 
to be able to talk with the spirits of the dead. Then this, the medium said, we have a very special surprise tonight for you people. A spirit will manifest itself openly here in a few minutes. And it's like, it's like a big gust of wind hit the building and right through the wall. <laughs> now the, the lights weren't uh, terribly bright, but they, you know, they were like living room lights. Uh, a couple of floor lamps and maybe some of these. And that uh, translucent being seemed to come right out of the wall. How did you feel right at that moment? It's almost like my heart stopped a little bit. Okay. You know, very weird feeling. So it was a lady in a beautiful evening gown, floor length. And she said to, to Mary, my dear sister, you are so wonderful to have asked for me. And Mary fainted and fell right off her chair on the floor. <laughs> and a couple of guys jumped up and picked her up and uh, spirit gone. And that was the beginning of it. That's how you got into it. Yeah, that's the way I got into it. After a while, you see, <clears throat> there's something interesting about the, the human uh, mind. You can adjust an awful lot of stuff. You can adjust to a lot of things that, you, that would terrify you to begin with, after a while they become common and ordinary. Hmm. So you mean contact with the supernatural can become commonplace and ordinary and doesn't bother anybody? Yeah. In other words, the more that you do it, you're not uncomfortable. That's it's right. It's just not an yeah. uneasy feeling. Yeah. So but how then, did you feel about it? Then I got that? into a secret society that worshiped the spirits, you see. Well, how did, okay, now how, how is that different from the seance, Roger? It happens that uh, <clears throat> the seance um, are not involving in many ways. But when you get into a secret society of spirit worshippers, then, and especially when you're invited there by the direction of the higher-ups in the spirit world, you never get out of there alive. And this is exactly what my friend and I were up against. We didn't know anything about it. And uh, there was a very, very popular uh, uh, big band leader. Jazz, jazz, jazz musician. Band, yeah. Very famous, played a lot in Montreal, Canada, Vancouver, the big cities. And uh, one night we went to uh, one of these uh, seances and uh, he was with his wife. Now the spirits had told him what to do. The spirit told him, there's two of these guys, give the names, and your wife will want to talk, uh, will make it so that your wife will want to talk to the, to the medium when you say that you want to go home because you're tired. As soon as you see that these guys are starting to, to, to want to leave, then leave with them at the same time. And as you get outdoors, you ask them if they're driving. They'll say, no, they're going to take the tramway a couple blocks away. Well, he's, you invite them to get in your car with you, with you and that you will take them to a fancy restaurant and, and treat them to some good food and uh, to talk about the Merchant Navy. And that's what they did, the guy uh, uh, did. And there we were in this, uh, well, this plush restaurant, pulled into a little alley, and I can still see it like it was yesterday. <laughs> Just enough room to pass the car, back alley, that happened to give on a, re a restaurant that was on St. Catherine's uh, Street, which is the main street in Montreal. And um, that was quite an evening. So, Roger, you're at this restaurant. What happened? Well, after we were seated, <clears throat> In entering there, the place was just full, packed tight. But there was a couple of tables against a wall that was had a reservation sign on it. And the uh, owner of the place recognized the band leader and came and said, good evening, and uh, you gentlemen want a table. So you're one of the reserve people. So we sat there, and uh, we had our favorite alcoholic beverages, you know. Uh, and uh, as we talk, uh, uh, the band leader says, how long have you fellas been involved with sorcery? <laughs> and he chalked us a little bit, and I said, exactly what do you mean? Well, he said, you know, what you people are doing, talking 